Greetings, fellow conquerors. This is Darkfire Slide, and welcome to Mountain Blade Warband and the Floor Ex Expanded mod. When I released my video saying that I wouldn't be covering EU4 content much anymore, I got a lot of people asking, hey, what game is this? And the people who did know what game it was asked which mod it was. And so, I'm going to both introduce Mountain Blade Warband as a game, and then mostly talk about Floris Expanded as a mod. So, without further ado, uh, let's just introduce Mountain Blade Warband itself, and then we'll talk about the mod. So, Mountain Blade Warband is best described as a... Strategic, tactical, medieval, no fantasy role-playing game. Um, it is all of these things. You build a character from the start, you have multiple companions that you can recruit throughout the land, all of whom have their own backstory uh, and things that they like and dislike, and you play a character leading around an army, whether in, and you can play pretty much however you want. I, I, I forgot to mention that this is basically a sandbox game. Um, in the vanilla game, and in Floris Expanded, you play in the land of Calradia, which is this land torn between five different warring factions. The the uh, the Kingdom of Swadia, the Kingdom of the Nords, the Kingdom of the Vagars, the Kingdom of the Rodox, and also the Serenid Sultanate and the Kurgit Khanate, who, um, all of whom have their own particular strengths uh, with troops that you recruit from towns throughout the various provinces. And then you pick, you do things like pick up missions from various lords and from towns, village elders, and from guild masters inside of cities. And as well, you can eventually become a mercenary working for a specific faction and even become a noble and eventually even a king, uh, which some people might consider to be the end goal. There are also things like claimants throughout the land who you can basically lead a revolution against a kingdom and use things like persuasion to try to get people on your side. All that being said, if that sounds like the game for you, stay you know stay tuned because I'm going to talk about a mod that is very near and dear to my heart. A game, or a mod that is pretty awesome in my opinion. And it is honestly my favorite mod uh, in the game um, for all the things it does. And so, Floris Expanded is a mod that it, it's an overhaul mod, but it still stays in Calradia with the traditional kingdoms. Uh, however, it does a few things that I really really like, and we're going to get into that. Uh, right now. So let's go ahead and uh, load up our character here. So here we are. Uh, this is my character, Ilya, who I've named after a character from Skyrim um, that you meet at one point. And, you know, there's a lot of things uh, about this mod that I really like. So first of all, the, the first and biggest thing that I really like about Floris are the expanded troop trees and the rebalanced troop trees to make every single faction basically competitive and unique uh, with the other factions, which is something that I just find awesome, because in Vanilla Mountain Blade Warband, um, basically you just spammed Swadian Knights or Serenid Mamluks, and that was the extent of the balance. <laughs> um, so, as you can see, I have a pretty mixed party of uh, varying different troops. I don't work for a faction yet. I'm not a mercenary. Um, I'm just kind of doing odd jobs, hunting down bandits, things of that nature. But let's look at the uh, upgrade trees just so you can really get an idea of uh, how ex you know how expanded these troop trees are. So the vanilla game only had you go up to about uh, this tier right or this tier right here, which is what you would call tier five. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, but now, in, in Flores Expanded, there are multiple branching paths, and each one of these units brings something to the table. So, for example, these, uh, if we look at these, you know, horse archers here. So, these Vagar Huntmasters have a power draw, power draw of 7, they have a black warbow, so, uh, with a pretty decent speed rating. Um, however, their horses are not armored, which means they're going to go, um, a little bit faster, uh, than their counterpart, and if we look at the uh, a, a archer of the same tier, we see that their power draw is actually less. So if you take the Vagar Huntmaster over the Mounted Archer, um, in, you're getting a more armored unit with the Mounted Archer, but they are less effective overall at, at shooting. Um, whereas these units, um, while they don't have as much potential, they are better in the short term, which can be a, a very interesting choice. And most of the other troop trees uh, work this way. And and more importantly, all of them have a very particular style. So the Vagars, for example, um, they have master archers 
that are very, very good at picking off units. They have competent uh, mounted horsemen as well. Their horsemen are okay, and their infantry are crap. But that's okay, because your archers are awesome, um, and you can use cavalry to kind of be your front line. Now, one change that I really, really love uh, in Flores is the treatment that the Rodox got. Um, because the Rodox in Vanilla were just bad. Like, Rodox sergeants were good, and Rodok uh, Elite Crosswomen were good in certain situations, but overall, their team just kind of sucked, really, and you needed to supplement it with other units. Not anymore. The Rodox in this mod are absolutely competitive, and, and arguably are, you know, a little bit better than in, in a lot of situations, like Sieges, compared to a lot of other factions. Um, and they actually got a cavalry tree. They have a, a lancer tree here um, that caps out with this master lancer here, who doesn't have uh, very good armor, admittedly. But that being said, I, I love these expanded troop trees, and they are arguably the primary reason that I play this mod. And so if this, this appeals to you, um, you know, please consider downloading this mod. You are going to have to get Floris from the Nexus, unfortunately. Um, but installing mods for Warband is really easy because all you have to really do is just, you know, put it in the mods folder in, in the Steam directory and then you, sh you should just be able to pick it when you launch the game uh, from the launcher itself, um, in case you didn't know how mods work for Warband. Uh, when you don't, subscribe to them on the workshop, of course. So all that being said, what are some of the other features that uh, Floris adds? Well, Floris has Diplomacy built in, and Diplomacy is a very useful mod um, that, in my opinion, the most useful thing it lets you do is talk to village elders without having to uh, um, ride into town every time. And, and the same with uh, guild masters, so it's a lot easier to uh, get their quests. You still have to meet them for the first time, but um, apart from that, it's, it's a pretty easy experience. Um, so, in addition to the like I said, the main feature of Flores that makes it better are the expanded troop trees, but what's also worth noting is that um, all of the um, weapons and armor have been uh, designed to be based around a certain um, you know, type of army. So the Rodox, for example, are based on French and Italian troops. So we have things like, uh, you know, massive great swords, these sort of uh, heater shields and pavis shields and uh, weapons like the Estoc. And uh, the armors also uh, look very um, Italian and, and French, I would say, uh, based on my own experience, uh, including things like this uh, iron salad or the uh, brabuta. I, I'm, you know, pronouncing these in silly ways, but you get the idea. And uh, one thing that is also great about this mod is that when you go to a marketplace, you know, and, and it's small touches like these that really make the mod, in my opinion. When you, when you actually go to a marketplace in the Rodot Kingdoms, you f actually find... Rodok weapons and Rodok armor, and and the same is true for every other kingdom, because um, that that's that's like the way it's designed. Like it makes sense that people of this culture would make things of this design. And if you're working for a faction, um, you know, or you are a noble, it is a lot easier to outfit yourself, make yourself look like you know an actual um, soldier. And speaking of which, another feature that um, Floris has is that you can actually join an army and let me, let me go talk to this uh, this noble here So this is Signore Dolor uh, Dashwal. He uh, I think he's a deserter from the uh, Kurgit Khanate. I'm Ilya He has not heard of me <laughs> And uh, as we see here, there's this option my lord I would like to enlist in your army a and so you actually become one of the soldiers that you recruit um, From the villages and you can work your way up to the master rank, and eventually you can actually um, desert and take all of your gear with you if you want to, though that'll seriously um, piss off both the lord and the uh, nation that you were working for. Another big uh, rebalance and feature that Flores has is that the bandits are a lot stronger. Um, and this is kind of a culture shock to a lot of people who uh, play the game. And for anyone playing, and, and now the mod isn't without its flaws. Uh, for example, um, one thing that's really difficult is, uh, or but you may enjoy this, is that eventually uh, bandit heroes will rise up who have um, armies of about a hundred bandits uh, and usually have a force of about eight other parties of bandits following that one force. So there could be as many as like 400 bandits uh, kind of just walking around. And, and while the bandits are tough, it's nothing a professional army uh, can't beat. 
especially if you have uh, in the upgrade trees some of the uh, tier 7, so like the final uh, troops. Now, I, I will give a small tip for people who start playing this mod. Don't ever, in the early game, fight the Serenid Bandits. They have a unit um, that is comparable to like... You know, like a, a Crusader Knight with like heavy armor that is basically just impossible to defeat um, in the early game. So anyway, let's let's look at the battles. Let's look at the battle to kind of round out this uh, this this showcase of the mod. All right, you know, classic line: uh, "Your luck has run out, wretch. Prepare to die, and we will take the field against these sixty-two mountain bandits." Now, mountain bandits are dangerous because uh, they have crossbows. Crossbows are good at punching through armor because of their high base damage. And this is a good chance for me, by the way, to um, talk about one, one of the issues that I have with Floris. Um, e even though I love this mod dearly. Um, okay, so first of all, one thing I do want to show... Uh, so. As you can see, if I open up my menu here with uh, selecting troops, I can I can select it at four at formation type orders, and I can actually pick things like setting my troops into ranks. But anyway, one of the large complaints I have about this mod, and this may this may be a deterrent for you, but also may be uh, useful advice to you. Um, archers are very very strong in this mod. Um, I don't know if it's because of the AI naturally being good when set to high skills, or if it's um just the Floris AI itself, which is uh, improved, I think. Um, archers are very, very powerful in this mod. They will focus fire targets. They will kill lots of people very quickly. Um, and they're very dangerous. And you may like this, you may not like this. Sometimes it's infuriating. Sometimes it's, it's you know, you feel like, you ha you know, like archers are actually worth having. Because sometimes in the vanilla game, you definitely didn't get that feeling. Now, for those who are still watching who haven't played Warband before, um, as you can see, we can actually control our troops, uh, send them across the battlefield to attempt to do real tactics, you know. Um, if we send our cavalry out to the flanks, they might get chased, but then that also leaves them exposed to um, archer shot uh, coming their way. And now is actually a good time to uh, send the troops forward, and because I have such a large army, I don't even need to really uh, charge in myself um, as a cavalryman. But now we are going to charge in anyway. He hit my horse with his javelin, you bastard! Oh, that was a Viking. <laughs> oh, another uh, change to Floris uh, that you can turn off because there are a lot of mod options um, is that pikes and spears do additional damage to cavalry to kind of make up for the fact that the spear mechanics in this don't really work the way that they should. And so it's very, very easy to use the spear to dehorse enemies, uh, which is very nice. Uh, we've won the battle, which is, you know, great. Taken no casualties and killed 62 bandits. We will take one of them as prisoners. I don't know who knocked him out, but, you know, good, good on you, basically. <laughs> and, uh, eh, nothing really of a uh, note in this pile. We're just going to go ahead and let our companions... Oh, so another cool feature of Floris, and, and you know, again, I you know, I want to apologize that this isn't like a professionally cut video, but there are just so many uh, nice features like this that I just forget about. Um, but one feature that's great about this is that you can actually let your companions um, gather all of the, the things from battle, and it, it actually fixes a problem uh, that was in Vanilla Warband, and, and let me show you what this issue is. So, in Vanilla Warband, the inventory management skill on companions was useless because they couldn't hold items. Well, in Floris, they can hold items. So you can actually kind of use them as pack mules um, if they have a high skill to um, carry items to cities and then sell items in those cities. So we'll go ahead and uh, give an example of this. So in the marketplace, we actually have the option to uh, sell items automatically, and you can even change the settings so that they don't sell items worth over a certain value in case you find like a legendary item um, from enemies, which is, again, something else that you can do in this mod that's really cool, is occasionally enemies will drop things like uh, masterwork or lordly weapons and armor. So... That is, again, just something that's really cool. So we'll go ahead and, and have them sell. And as you can see, we see how much money they have. And I believe that it uses the highest merchant skill available, um, not the one it set to each individual person. So, again, just really cool stuff, in, in my opinion, that they did. And, uh, yeah, so, that, so I'm going to go ahead and... Um, 
end the video here. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope this video was informative, and I hope that you'll give the mod a try. I'll leave a link in the description for the official mod. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is uh, if you don't like a certain part of it, for example, the base mod has some really irritating... Uh, like, uh, for example, like, like really irritating names, because uh, all the unit names will be in, like, Italian, or in uh, attempting to match, like, the language of the Khans, or, or uh, like, like Turkish and Egyptian names for the Serenids, uh, things of that nature. And if you don't like that, there is actually a um, English language uh, version, which is what I have here, so it actually says things like Nord Vikings, uh, Rodok Pikemen, Vagar Knights, uh, instead of, like, the, uh, the attempt at localization with the names, but you may find that that adds flavor. Um, I, I may dig that out and try to find a link for that uh, in case you don't like having names like a uh, Novitia for like a Rodok novice, for example. But anyway, again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to see more videos like this kind of introducing games or introducing mods for uh, certain games, let me know in the comments, and uh, subscribe if you want to see, you know, if you're, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And of course, leave a like so that the video gets more popular, more people see, and the channel continues to grow. So thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.